I have this. I have this. I have this like light thing, and it turns on, but it's like it's charging right now. It's not charging. <laughs> I have my <laughs> random light therapy, so I'm yeah. throwing it together too. We're we're making it through. We're making it through. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm Ariana. Nice to talk to you again. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good to see you too. I love your paintings. Is that a cat? You have a cat? Uh, yes, this is my sister's cat, Leo, that my older brother got like a picture of him drawn. And this my mom has had since like way before I was born. So yeah. No, no. I gotta awesome. get me. That. Awesome. Well, um, be Mickey. He just needs a hug and several other things, but he just needs for a real, hug. For real, man. Uh, were you surprised how much your character changed in season two? Wasn't surprised. I was anticipating it. Um, I understood how savvy he was the last season. And this season, I was anticipating more of the spiritual side of him. Um, the relationship that he has with his mom and me um, exposing that to the audience more. Um, I was looking forward to that because I saw my mom in it. You know, I was able to relate with that story, you know, not really with the dementia and all that, but building a relationship, you know, with 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 a mother, you know, and going having those situations and experiences that you go home to that you as an audience, as a fan, as a real person in time, you wouldn't necessarily always see, you know. Um, I love being able to incorporate that humane aspect in him rather than people seeing him as that animal that he was the first season. Um, this being more, just becoming more of a man, um, and seeing that essence of him, um, that was my main objective. That was my main objective as, as, as a black man and a black boy to watch be Mickey, um, and also relate to the things that he is doing in time. That's what was my main goal, just to be just to be a, rela a relatable character, you know? Yeah, it's I feel like it answers. There's still so many questions about B. Mickey, but answers a lot of questions because he's kind of been living in this basement this whole time, even though he's supposedly like this big drug dealer yeah. and we can kind of understand like the mystery of and why he is sometimes like really stoic, especially the first season, because he's been dealing with his mom, which I'm guessing at this point was his only family. Um, yeah. Do you think that he wouldn't have gone down the spiral and been so vulnerable to being influenced by Detective Bryant if Cato wasn't allegedly carrying his child because I'm not sure if I completely believe this story either. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't even think that it was me killing my baby that made me jump that barrier with Detective Bryant. I think it was more so me being suspicious of the loyalty of Meech having the relationship with B. Mickey because he was given a position that he felt like he was so deserving of, but in a way that he didn't want to accept it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like Terry leaves, oh, you give me this. Mm -hmm. I don't believe I'm deserving of it because I've been longing for it so many, so much. I've done so many things, meets to show that my, show my loyalty and Terry wasn't there. But just because he was your brother, he was given that position. Um, I feel like so that was where he had to cross those lines with Detective Bryant and see if his loyalty was parallel to Meech's loyalty. And if not, a little bit higher caliber. And it was, you know, when you talk about a character's mother and family and jeopardizing that. And then also jeopardizing, we can we can scratch off Cato. I got two homicides and a gun over my head as well. You know, so we got to pay attention to that. Um, and that just goes back to a relatable story that you as a, as, a, as a fan, as an audience watcher, as that everyday corner boy that that's on the street. You don't see those situations and experiences that they go home to, you know, and that was really 
the main objective I was trying to show this season as a character. Um, who who do they go home to and how they handle those situations, you know? Yeah, speaking of Meech and B. Mickey, it's such a complicated relationship. And also, if you throw in Terry, because Terry does not like B. Mickey and never has liked B. Mickey, why oh. do you think there is all that animosity there? And do you think Meech's quote unquote loyalty to B. Mickey is true? Like he buys these plots. Was that genuine? Does he actually genuinely forgive B. Mickey? Like, what is going on with the Flunori boys and Mickey? Well, as an audience member, I can say this. When it comes to Meech's loyalty and 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 why he brought up the barrier plots or what have you, I don't I don't feel like it was genuine in a sense. I feel like, and then as 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 a character too, B. Mickey saw it as him trying to cover up his ass. You know, mm-hmm. no, Meech was just trying to cover up whatever was going on with B. Mickey, trying to make sure that he's good. And um, that just goes back to B. Mickey questioning his loyalty and his objectives of why he was doing it. Um, and then going back to the animosity with Terry, uh, and he's been given a position that Terry has always had, mm-hmm. you know, and he's seeing B. Mickey is always be missing, you know, <laughs> yes. you feel me? And it's like, he can't be always be missing. And he's this so-called second in command. He's he's this person that has control and ex- to an extent over everything, but he's not there. Um, that's where the animosity and, and jealousy comes. And I feel like that's the reasoning why Terry had came back and joined and let go of the lim- limousine services um, to make sure everything was solidified and taken care of because B. Mickey wasn't doing that. And there was a reason why. Um, and we sure and we all know or the reason because of that. So. Yes, and it also feels like it's like briefly mentioned that B. Mickey is Meech's like second grade friend. And in my head, as an audience member, I feel like B. Mickey was kind of the first person that kind of became between Terry and Meech as in like, oh, I can have friendships other than like this really tight brotherhood we have. So Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it is just jealousy. Mm -hmm. Uh, But... Do you think Meech actually has forgiven B. Mickey? So far in this season, no. Um, The only reason why is, and I can say it from uh, from my perspective watching in, uh, it looks a little shady having a wire in a hat. Why did he set you up like that? I know it's the late 80s, but it's so obvious that something's going on. It looks a little shady when you have a wire on a hat. So, you know, exiting that scene, jumping out of the window and having that last bit of dialogue between B. Mickey and Meech, I had no other choice. There's always another choice. Mm-hmm. Um, there was, I feel like there's not, there's not going to be an understanding until there's an understanding you know, in a moment of time. And you're going to get that this next episode. I'm sure you saw in the trailer where Meet said, I got you. Mm-hmm. you know? So there's now more of, I feel like there's now more of a mutual understanding of why B. Mickey was moving the way he was moving. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like Meet still doesn't see the, any justification to that, mm-hmm. but still understanding, okay, I know where you are in your life and I will help you get out of it. Yeah. You know, so. Yes. How was it like as an actor to shoot? It was like a very emotional scene after you're running out of Brian's house and things just went south. You're crying. It's just like everything that has been building up probably for all of B. Mickey's life. It like finally hits ahead. Like, what was it like shooting that very emotional scene for B. Mickey? As an actor, I had so much fun. Um. I was able to show my chops a little bit and mm-hmm. grasp certain energy that I really never really thought I had as an actor in, in, internally in myself. Um, um, B. Mickey's headspace, though, uh, I just had to figure out and navigate, like, what was his soft spot? You know what I mean? Um, we see B. Mickey as, like I said, we've seen B. Mickey as this animal savvy crazy person almost linear to Lamar you know and now we see him vulnerable 
you know, not knowing his place in life and where he's going to go. Um, and it was fun navigating that and trying to figure out where I could take that, you know? Yes, definitely. It was definitely a different side of B. Mickey and even Miles in the, as an actor. But speaking of your acting career, I feel like you have a thing for period pieces. Like I talked to you before BMF premiered and you're just like, oh, what attracted me to the role is that I really wanted to do a period piece. And like yeah. you've done them at this point, like yeah. new edition, Stranger Things. What attracts you to those types of roles? Um, That's a crazy story. So uh, when I was in middle school, uh, there was a lot of, remember 9-11? So you know how middle school, everybody pledged allegiance to 9-11, watching 9-11 videos. And when I realized that we were the reason the U.S. government was the real reason of why 9-11 was caused and we were in depth and so we had to cover it over al-qaeda al that just gave me a, a insight of what amount of history is being told to us in a in in, in, a, in a way that is right and and factual you know uh to a certain extent growing up to these dialogues and in, in books i only had context to who i am as far as harriet tubman slavery and Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. And I felt like we were more than that. I felt like there's more to grasp of our history and time. And that's what grasp that that's what attracts me to period pieces, being able to go back in time and relive history to an extent to where I would understand and 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 and, and educate myself and also experience it all in once rather than just um suppressing myself to dialogue and books. Because there's so much, people don't even know that the touchscreen was made by a black man. No, I did not. Literally, I did not know that. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's a story in itself that can be made, you know. But we have Steve Jobs, we have uh, Elon Musk, you know, and we have all these guys like the traffic light. I'm sure you know that mm -hmm. black man, you know. So that that's that's why I love periodic pieces because I can go back in time and re relive history and relive different parts of history that I probably would have never learned in my life if I didn't if I didn't attract myself towards it yeah and it's being told from the black perspective because as you were saying there's like centuries of time that yeah. us black people are just ignored and the history isn't told from our perspective yeah uh I noticed on your social media that you seem to be really into music as well am I just assuming that or is mm -hmm. that love music I love I played trumpet for three years I played electric guitar um very musically inclined man I, I, I love I love common I love Nas and when it comes to rap 90s was my favorite era I love funk you know what I'm saying so the 70s I love that I love I love the the the, the whole aesthetic of how f films were filmed as well in the 70s and the 80s um that's where we were able to as as a society and as a culture we were able to grasp who we were and how much control we have in this entertainment film industry and um we've explored so much and we've evolved so much and we're still evolving now um so yeah yeah and music plays such a big part of the show as well yeah. um are you kind of getting because obviously you Miles wasn't around during this time period. Are you kind of getting new music recommendations through the show or even like talking to your parents and family? Like, oh, well, I definitely remember that song and like what I was doing then. Yeah, I remember there was one scene um, from the last uh, season where um, I think it was either episode two or three. Meech and Terry and B. Mickey were all sitting at the round table in Lucille's kitchen. And we were all trying to figure out, all right, how are we about to stretch this cocaine? Mm -hmm. And um, they all turned to me and the king of rock. I'm the king of rock. There is no <laughs> high. The sucking MCs will call me high. And, you know, that was just a, a, a pinpoint, a pivotal a moment for me, just learning different music and learning different styles of, uh, you know, of that genre. And Run DMC was a big, you know what I'm saying, part of Meech and Terry's life, you know, growing up. They had Run DMC plasters all over their wall, you know, and always listening to that music while driving in the car, you know. So that was just one of those moments where I was able to just like educate myself on music and that type of style and that era. Yes. Um, speaking of 
wasn't around in that era and is kind of really being introduced in this era. Yeah. Um, the thing about BMF is that it's like this gripping drama. However, on social media, it turns into like kind of this comedy and even the marketing of it on social media is a bit like, if you know, you know, it's a comedic twist of it, like be, uh, be Mickey and this bagel when he's thrown in the car. Do you ever interact with the social media of it all? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Or as an actor, do you kind of try to keep that separate? Try to keep that separate. I try to keep that separate. I leave the fun to the fans, man, because I know when I... When I watch a movie, when I go watch Creed, I'm going to be in the comments too. You feel me? So I'm going to leave it to them because I know how much fun it is. I know how much fun it is to like put your two cents into what you've watched and not feel like you're being judged for that. You know what I mean? Everybody has a different perspective. Everybody has a different opinions. Everybody has had their own life experiences. And then on top of that, being able to relate and watch it towards this show, you know, I, I don't want to diminish that at all. I want people to watch it and love it for what it is. Yes, for sure. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I've learned so many things. Like your approach as an actor is amazing. I can't wait to see what comes and hopefully I will talk to you more about it. But thanks so much and I will talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. You have a great weekend. Awesome, you too, thank you.